Good day and welcome to creating an Iron Strong Mindset series. In this series, we are going to be speaking about leading a disciplined life by controlling our thoughts. Now, let me just start by asking you this. Have you realized that almost every second, every moment in a day, you have this little voice in your head? Some people call it thoughts. Some people call it the inner voice. And for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to be alternating between calling this the thoughts and the inner voice. But let's start with the voice. Do you realize that you have this voice in your head pretty much dictating your life? Telling you what to do, telling you what to think, telling you how to feel about something, telling you whether you like or don't like something, telling you what decision to make. Now, I am going to share with you a little secret about this voice. And before that, I'm just going to ask you, can you control this voice? Do you have any form of control over this voice? And if your answer is yes, we can control this voice, then you are absolutely correct. We can control this voice. And the secret is simply this. If you learn the art of controlling this voice, you can control your life. And that's exactly what we are going to be speaking about in this video. Now, let me also talk to you a little bit about us, you know. What is it that we really want? What is it that we really aspire for? Is it to be happy? Is it to be healthy? Is it to be successful? Now, whatever it is that we want, we have power to actually action this. And we can start actioning this by controlling our thoughts, choosing every single thought that we have. And if we don't really have control over thoughts, what's going to happen is in life, we are just going to be beaten around by these waves. And we don't want that because if we are just beaten around waves in life, we don't have any form of direction. What we want is understand that life is a series of waves, sometimes rough, sometimes calm, but we want to have the ability to ride that wave. And whoever it is watching this video, warm welcome to you. Whether you are a supervisor, whether you're an employee at an organization, whether you are in a leadership position, whether you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, a CEO, a parent, or someone just truly interested in self-development, whatever has brought you towards watching this video, I promise you that the three tools that, we, that we're going to share with you in this video is truly going to be life-changing. Now, let me start by sharing with you something really simple. I actually want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a story, a story that I heard some time ago. And this story is actually about a little boy in the 1930s. He was in India and he used to love eating sweets. His mom did everything she could to stop him from eating sweets, but he just refused to listen. The mom didn't really know what to do and how to handle the situation because the son was refusing to listen to her. And a neighbor suggested like Bapu is just in a neighboring village, Bapu as in Gandhi. So she said, Bapu is just in the neighboring village. Why don't you just go and see him? And he always has a solution to problems like this. So this lady in the sweltering heat, walked all the way to Gandhi's ashram and there she met Gandhi and she told him, Bapu, I need your help. My son refuses to listen to me and he's always eating all these sweets. Can you just please advise him? So Gandhi looked at the little boy and said, come back in two weeks and see me. So the mom was a little dumbfounded. She didn't know why she had to come back in two weeks, but obviously no one argues with Gandhi. So the mom goes back home. After two weeks, makes that journey again in that hot sun and finally reaches Gandhi's ashram. And this time, Gandhi looks at the boy and says, little boy, stop eating all these sweets. It's really not good for you. And the little boy looks at him and says, okay, Bapu, I will stop eating the sweets. And the mom now is perplexed. Like, why did you make me come all the way again when you could have just told him this the first time? So she asked Gandhi this, to which Gandhi said, well, uh, two weeks ago, I used to love eating sweets myself. 
and it will be very wrong for me to advise your son to stop eating sweets when I love eating sweets myself. So I gave this two weeks in order for me to stop eating that sweet so that I am in the right position to actually advise your son. And don't you think we are all in that position sometimes? Like we have to be in that position of leadership. We are in that position where we, are, we could be a role model for someone. And they are looking up to us. They are looking up to us to provide some form of guidance. They are looking up to us to be able to be the person who can inspire them, to motivate them when they are feeling down. And that is where, as leaders, what I, whichever role we are, a leadership does not necessarily need to have a title. Whatever role you are playing in your life where people are looking up to you, you need to be able to show and exercise that self-care. And that's what this series is about. Even in the toughest times, even when we are riding a tough wave, a rough wave, we are able to exercise that mental strength, that tenacity, and to be able to always come out a champion no matter what the situation is. So if you're wondering, what's in it for you? What do you get out of this video? Why should you spend the next half an hour watching this video? This is what you're going to get out of it. This is your WIIFM. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to speak about it in a very practical sense. We're going to speak about it in a very simple technique because a lot of times when you want to discuss the mind, the mind is something or rather the brain is one organ which is still being researched. It's still a mystery in so many sense. So we're going to keep it very simple. We want to know when it comes to the workings of the mind, the so controlling the thoughts, championing those thoughts. We want to keep it in a way that all these tools are simple, it's practical, it is something that you can apply in your lives right after this video. So we're going to start with a concept of there's only two ways you can look at life. That is one of the concepts we're going to speak about. And then we're going to speak about the law of the mind. And trust me, once you understand the law of, your, of the mind, you are going to alter every single thought that you have henceforth. And then we are going to end this video with the three tools that I promised you about. The three tools that you can take and apply right after you finish watching this video. So actually, it's pretty simple. There's only two ways when we look at it, two ways to live life. You can choose to live life as a superhero, which means you take charge of everything that comes in your path, or you can choose to live life as a victim. Now, what we're going to do in this video is look at life in general. Now, we all want a great life, whatever, however you choose to define great. So for some people, great, a great life means material wealth. For some people, it means having all the love you want. For some people, it means to have fame and success. So I'm just going to call it a great life, whatever you want. So whatever you choose your great life to be, it always starts with those little thoughts that you have each day. So what we want to do in this video is create that change. There are times in life where we feel a little sorry for ourselves. We may throw ourselves a little pity party here and there. But we don't want to be in that position too long. We want to learn how to become the superhero in our life. We want to learn how to become that person who always is able to come out of any tough situation. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. Now, before we get started, I just want to talk to you about these two mindsets. The victim mindset and the superhero mindset. So just to give you a preview, what is a victim mindset? A victim mindset is basically a person who constantly, constantly finds the darker side of everything, constantly feels very sorry for themselves, constantly finds a way to make excuses, constantly finds a way to find faults. If anything goes wrong, it's everybody else's fault. Now, a superhero, on the other hand, does not have time for all this. Remember what a superhero does. All superheroes from whichever superhero movie that we watch, they are busy going out to save the world, right? So that's exactly what we want to do. We understand that life is not fair. We understand that life may throw us a curveball and, we are, and when we are least prepared for it. And yet, what a superhero would do in that circumstance is take responsibility, take charge. Before we proceed any further, I would encourage you to pause this video for one moment 
and just take a moment to reflect. Where have you been spending your life? Have you been a victim most of the time? Or have you been a superhero? Now remember, you are watching this video most likely alone. Nobody is there to judge you. Nobody is there to question you, not even me. What you're going to do is be very honest with yourself. Be very truthful when you do this self-reflection exercise. And I would like you to take a minute to pause and think, where have you been in your life? Have you always been spending time in the victim mindset more often than not? Or have you always been the kind who is known to be the positive person, the person who takes responsibility, the person who takes charge, the person who somehow is able to find solution, the person who only speaks about good stuff every day, the person who doesn't find time to gossip about other people, the person who always go the extra mile, always steps out of the comfort zone. Are you that kind of a person? So take a minute to reflect on this and then take a minute to fill up that chart that you just saw and start to think about the attributes. What does it look like when a person has a victim mindset? And what does it look like when a person has a superhero mindset? I encourage you to pause this video for a minute, write down, evaluate for yourself where you are, and please play this video once you've done that exercise. Okay, welcome back. I am sure you have evaluated yourself and there is no one better than you to evaluate yourself and see where have you been. Now, let's be very practical. There are times that we have been in the victim mindset. I have been in the victim mindset myself. Till today, there are days where I feel I can be in the victim mindset when things get really rough. The question you should be asking yourself is how long have you spent in the victim mindset? Now, the difference between a person who is naturally a superhero is they do not, they may be in the victim mindset for a few minutes, for a few moments, but they know exactly what they need to do to bounce back. And that's what we want to do, to be able to bounce out of the victim mindset and enter the superhero mindset. So here you would see in this slide, I've given you a few more examples. So what a victim really looks like, what a superhero looks like, and over here, I have added some more examples. So I think I've kind of explained it already. You know exactly what it looks like to be a victim, what it looks like to be a superhero. Now, what we want to do is find ways how to move forward. Why is it sometimes we are in a victim mindset? Why is it sometimes we give excuses? All of us have done it from time to time. Sometimes we do it because we feel that we refuse to come out of our comfort zone. This is how I've known how to do something and this is how I'm going to do it. I didn't expect to get retrenched. I didn't expect to lose my job. I didn't expect the environment to change. I didn't expect the government to change. I didn't expect this person to behave this way. I didn't expect that my relationship will take this turn. And usually when we are in those situations, we just feel that, that's why life made me a victim and we think that it's okay. And what is worse about the situation is we may have a group of people around us who constantly tells you, poor thing, yeah, you know, it's, it's natural that you are sad, life is really unfair and continues to make you feel that way. Now remember, you have that choice. You truly have that choice. How long do you want to spend in the victim mindset? and how quickly you want to snap out of it. Sometimes we always feel things is happening, it's not my fault, oh, it's unfair, it's not my job. Or we feel that we have just gone through this very unfortunate event that maybe someone else has not gone through. And some of you may be watching this video thinking, but Sri, you don't know what I've gone through. I've been through so much in my life, but I'm sure you have not gone through yourself. And it's, it's natural for me to be a victim. Yes. Sometimes life can be very unfair. Sometimes you may just look up and think, Dear God, why me? Right? This is the story of Janine Shepard. Janine Shepard was training to join the Winter Olympics in Calgary. And one fine day, she took a bike and she headed up the mountains in the west of Sydney. As she was cycling, she was enjoying her ride feeling the sunshine in her face and the next thing she knew everything went black she was hit by a truck she broke her neck broke her back broke her spine 
suffered massive head injuries, massive bleeding, and she was totally unconscious for 10 days. It was the kind of injuries that left her paralyzed, waist down. Doctors told her that walking would be near impossible and even if it was possible, she would be needing the walking frame and life would just never be the same again. After many, many surgeries, Janine Shepard was allowed to go home. Now remember, this is a woman who was an athlete, the woman where her body was everything. Competitive sports was everything. And now to be confined to the home, confined on a wheelchair, it was an absolute change for her. And just before she left the spinal ward, the nurse warned her and the nurse told her, Janine, as you go back home, everything may change. And Janine asked, how so? And the nurse said, you're going to get depressed. Janine said, no. Janine said, I am Janine the machine. I will not get depressed. I, I will know what to do. She went home. The days went by. And true enough, she got depressed. She just didn't know what to do. And there were days she spent crying. There were days she refused to get out of bed. One fine day, she was sitting on her wheelchair outside her home, thinking about how life has just taken this drastic turn. All of a sudden, she saw an airplane fly by. She looked at the airplane and at that point, her eyes and her mind were open. This was her exact words. Her eyes and her mind was open. And she told herself, well, if I can't walk, if I can't run, then I might as well fly. Her friend drove her to the local airport, Bankstown Airport, and there her journey began, her new journey, where she learned how to fly. And she went the whole nine yards. She started off as just learning how to fly the plane. And she, within a year of leaving the spinal ward, got a commercial pilot's license and went on to teach other people how to fly in that short span of time. And this was only possible simply because of the mindset that Janine had at that point. The mindset that she's never going to give up. The mindset that, you know what, this has happened to me now. Yes, I've been in a victim mindset long enough, but it's time to change my life around. And that's what she did. She was a person who completely had to shift her entire world around. And this is something really not many people is accustomed to doing because a lot of us believe that when something really bad happens, it's normal for people to go into depression. And yes, it is normal. Through Janine Shepard, we learn that it's okay to be depressed once in a while, but we do not need to stay there. We don't have to live our lives confined to fate. That fate has left me paralyzed. Janine started her journey with being completely unable to walk and then the best she could do was lift her feet a few inches off the ground and then she went from two people holding her up to one person holding her up and then she started to teach herself how to walk by just holding on to furniture and now Janine flies a plane she's an author she's an international speaker and she is a brand new person and this is exactly the kind of stories we need to hear from time to time we need to learn from time to time and we need to understand that when there are people like this around, when there are people who have gone through the unthinkable in life and if they can survive, what is it that really stops us? What is the difference? And this is where I want to introduce you a little bit to the mind. The mind is where everything begins. Unfortunately, sometimes that's also where everything ends. Now, I would like you to just imagine yourself as a gardener. Think of yourself as a gardener. You are the gardener of your mind. And remember that you have all the choice what kind of seeds do you want to plant? What kind, how do you want to take care of your garden? Do you want to plant it with beautiful flowers? Or do you feel that from time to time you want to work on your garden and then there are days where maybe you don't feel like working on your garden and you're just going to let it just, you know, let it grow. Let the weeds come, you know, when, when I feel like cleaning it up, I will. But otherwise, you know, we'll just let it be. Now, our mind is just like a garden. If you do not take care of it every day, 
then the weeds will start to grow and that weeds is all those negative thoughts all those thoughts that other people plant in your head all those things that that people make us feel that it's okay a lot of things that we choose to read a lot of things that we choose to watch are sometimes things that does not serve our mind purpose things that does not help that beautiful flowers grow in our mind so how does how does the supercomputer work I, i always think our mind is like a great supercomputer how does it really really work now let's speak about something quite interesting shall we the law of mind is the law of belief now this is taken from a book by Dr. Joseph Murphy and this is one of my favorite books of all time about the mindset. And what Dr. Joseph M- Murphy is basically saying is whatever you believe is true in your mind, isn't it? So if you believe that you are a very talented person and you have a talent in a certain area and you want to keep working to harness this talent, that is exactly what you're going to do. Or if you're going to believe that you know what this is all i am this is all i can do i'm too old to go out and and search for my passion i'm too old to chase after my dreams and if you've chosen that to believe as true that's exactly how it's true for you and that is exactly why some people may be our age some people may have our limited capacity some people may have resources way lesser than us and yet they are able to go out and achieve greater success in the field that they have chosen and again when i mean success it may not only mean financial success it may just mean achieving things in life that we always wanted to achieve pursuing that dreams that we want to dream so the law of the mind is the law of belief and where does the belief come from the belief comes from the every single thought that we have every moment those choices that we make what do we think about ourselves and this comes back to the inner voice that we were speaking about very early in this video ladies and gentlemen so a lot of times when we just let those thoughts linger we let thoughts come in and out and we think like oh we have no control over it let's just backtrack for a moment hit the rewind button a little bit and realize that every single thought that we have we have absolute control over it we can stop a particular thought and change it completely and once you know that you can do this and alter your thoughts and reprogram your thoughts everything changes something that you couldn't do before can become possible and i'm going to give you some examples of that shortly now when it comes to the mind some of us may have heard this term conscious mind and unconscious mind so let me just share with you a little bit about what is the conscious mind the conscious mind is this if you if you consider this whole thing to be your mind this is your conscious mind and a lot of times studies researchers psychologists they say that the conscious mind is about 10% and the unconscious mind which is this iceberg over here that is your 90%. Now, let's put it in a very simple term. The conscious mind is the master and the unconscious mind is the servant. Okay? So the conscious mind is what decides, makes that everyday decision. And the unconscious mind is basically that section of the mind that would regulate everything in your body for example if you are sitting now watching this video and you are listening to me and processing what i'm telling you that is the work of your conscious mind and what is your unconscious mind doing at this moment it's also listening in it's also eavesdropping everything that you're taking in but do you realize as you're listening to this video your heart is still beating do you realize you're still breathing your blood is still circulating your digestive system is still working now who's taking care of all this who's taking care of all this this is your unconscious mind or the servant they are the ones who is taking care of everything for the master whatever the master which is the conscious mind right so whatever the master says the servant executes now once you understand this you are going to begin to think differently now let me explain to you in the form of an example shall we now a lot of us have new year resolutions a lot of us always want to achieve something so one of the most popular new year resolution is always i want a healthy lifestyle i want to lose weight i want to eat clean or whatever it is right so we make this new year resolution now what is it that makes this resolution is it the conscious mind or the unconscious mind 
it is the conscious mind, right? So the conscious mind makes this decision. And you know, whenever we think of a goal or we think of a resolution, it's really fun. You know, sometimes some of us even write it down in a little book and we are very excited about it. And we're like, yeah, you know, when it comes the new year or comes the new month or the new week, I, I want to have a healthy lifestyle. And it feels good because we feel like we have a plan. Now, in order to make a goal successful, in order for a plan to come come into action, what we need to do is take some steps towards it, correct? So now comes the time to take action. So if we want a healthy lifestyle, what do we need to do? We need to eat clean, we need to exercise, and let's say it comes time to exercise. Now what will happen is, we need to wake up a little earlier. Let's say we need to wake up half an hour earlier to exercise before we go to work, for example, right? And the alarm rings and we are supposed to wake up and now you're feeling like, oh, the alarm's ringing, you've got to wake up and your conscious mind has woken up and now it's thinking, oh man, it's raining outside, it, it really feels good to sleep, right? So what happens is we give ourselves excuse number one, I will start tomorrow. And now your unconscious mind is listening to this. Your unconscious mind is listening to this and said, oh, what did you say, master? Oh, you're tired? You, you want to start tomorrow? Okay, let's just do that. And your unconscious mind will just lull you back to sleep. And isn't that true? I mean, when you hit the snooze button for five minutes, right? That five minutes of sleep you have between the, the snooze button and the time the alarm rings again, that's like the five best five minutes sleep you will ever have. Because that's your body telling you sleep, sleep. And your unconscious mind and conscious mind is perfectly aligned to get you to sleep again. And then when it's time for you to take your next action, your next action, your next action, you keep giving yourself all these excuses and all these excuses will prevent you from reaching your goal. And then you look at it after a year has passed, that healthy lifestyle that you wanted never took place because you have been busy giving yourself excuses. And remember this, every single time your conscious mind gives an excuse, your unconscious mind will be listening very carefully and saying, yes, master, you're too tired to exercise today. Okay, no need to exercise. And gets you feeling really tired because that's what you wanted. It sends all the hormones to your body at the right time to get you to feel what you were feeling because that was the instruction that you have given the unconscious mind and it acts accordingly and it acts accordingly it never makes the master a liar it will make sure it does exactly what the master wants it to do and what happens is now we are creating this thought process known as a neural pathway so we keep creating this thought process so every time it's time to exercise an automatic thought process comes in, the automatic excuse. Because we have always done it again and again, that has become a habit. In fact, in a very simple nutshell, that's exactly how habits are created and habits can be broken as well. So this is what we do not want. We do not want to send the wrong signal to our unconscious mind because that's where the misalignment happens. We want to achieve something, but we self sabotage. So what we want to do instead is keep the promises that you make to yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have told yourself like, hey, you know what? I want a healthy less lifestyle, start doing it. And this is not just for a healthy lifestyle. This is whatever goals you have set for yourself, whether it's a corporate goal, a goal for your career, whether it's about hitting higher numbers if you are in sales. Maybe it's Maybe it's increasing the quality or maybe it is just leading your teams better. Whatever it is that you aspire for yourself, it all starts with creating that goal and making sure that every thought that you have leads up consistently towards that goal. So don't make a promise to yourself and break the promise. Because once you do that, it becomes very normal. Your servant will be listening in and be thinking, okay, he doesn't want to do it now, okay. Let's just make that happen. He keeps saying that he's tired. Let's make him tired. He keeps saying that he wants to do it tomorrow. Let's just make that happen. And that's how things have been going on into our system. And we want to be able to break that pattern. So how do we break that pattern? Here comes the three tools. The first one, be very careful about how you speak to yourself. Can I tell you another secret? I know I'm a trainer and I'm supposed to say all the nice things about training but the secret is this. This is why a lot of communication workshops don't work 
Because when you go for a communication training, they will tell you everything about communicating to another person out there. And people listen to it and when they go out and try to apply it, they have trouble applying those techniques simply because communication does not happen between two people only. Communication actually begins with ourselves. Communication begins with how we feel within ourselves. So start by becoming very conscious about how you speak to yourself. So if you constantly tell yourself, oh, I'm tired, I'm lazy, I, I don't think I can do it, I don't want to do it, I'll do it tomorrow. And we get used to feeling that way. Now that's exactly what your servant is going to be listening to into right because the master has said so so because the master has said so the servant's going to listen to it and make that happen to you and sometimes after a few months we sit down and wonder why are we still here or a few years have passed and you're wondering why haven't i made any progress in my life why am i still here why haven't i achieved the success and happiness that i want because maybe all we need to do is stop and have a look at how we have been speaking to ourselves. So be very conscious of the language. I'll, I'll, I'll try and see if I can do it. You know, I'm not good enough. Or I, I'm, I'm too old for this. You know, be very conscious of those language and change it to realistic language. Change it to language that gives you hope, language that gives you motivation, language that helps you get action. I'll get this done right now. I'm going to take a 10 minute break and I'm going to sit and finish this. I'm not tired. All I need is, I need something to recharge. I need to recharge. Because there are times where your body, maybe if you've been working too hard, it's natural to feel a little tired. But do you want to keep giving that as an excuse over and over? I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Like if you're, if you're constantly going to be tired, who's going to go out and get work done, right? So yeah, you know, I have been working a little longer. I just need half an hour to sit and finish this report. You know what? Let me recharge. Your recharge could be anything. It could be a five-minute coffee break. I'm going to recharge. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to get my report done. So see the language we're going to use in our mind instead of I'm tired, I need to recharge. Get your recharge done, come back and get your work done. And it's as simple as that. It's just the language we use in our mind. Now let's look at the next tool that I want to talk to you about. This is very interesting. This is something that I have been doing over and over and it is very successful. Now, I like to call this tool the commander, okay? The moments where you always tend to have, we kept talking about the inner voice, right? Sometimes we have two voices. We have the angel and the demon, the good guy and the bad guy, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes you just want to get out of bed on Sunday morning, right? Sunday morning, you want to get out of bed and do something productive. It could be reading, it could be meditation, it could be exercise, whatever it is you want to do. And that that demon will be, or that, that little voice will be telling you like, ah, oh, sleep in, you know, you hardly get some chance to rest, right? And then you need the positive voice, the, 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 the good guy. You need the good guy to always overpower that weak voice. So this is where I always say the commander. So always get the commander to be active in you. Get your commander to shout at that little dark devilish voice which just tells you all the bad stuff. Get the commander to get this to be quiet. Okay, so for example, if you are about to do a public speaking, for example, you need to go on stage or you need to, during a meeting, you need to do this quick presentation and you're feeling all these nerves and then the little voice starts telling you, oh, I don't think you can do it, you know, the, the MD is here, the CEO is here and I, I'm not sure, I, I think you're going to get nervous right now and get the big voice to say, be quiet, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to do the presentation and I'm going to crush it and I'm going to take big, deep, breaths and I'm going to feel good and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to crush it because I can do this. I have rehearsed enough and I got this. This is going to be the best presentation I've ever done and go out there and get it done. So every time you have this conflict, the moment that the little devilish demon, demonic voice comes out and tells you that you can't do something, get the commander out. Get the commander out to silence the little fellow. And every time you do this, remember, ladies and gentlemen, every thought process done over and over creates a new neural pathway. And every time you create the new neural pathway, what happens is you do it a few times, it becomes a new habit. And by habit, every time the little naughty voice comes out, the commander will step in 
and silence him. And this is where you start taking action, good action, positive action. So use the commander the right way. Now, the final technique that I want to share with you, which is again, a very simple, a very practical, a very doable technique is, what do you do before you go to bed? How do you fall asleep? Now, a lot of times, we love using our gadgets, don't we? We love looking at the phone, we love playing games. We get our minds so active that we have trouble falling asleep. Champion, I will have to admit confession, I am great at this and I tend to always self-sabotage by telling myself I have insomnia. It's, I, it's natural. I, I'm, I'm going to wake up at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And it, it used to be a routine where I kept waking up at godforsaken hours, watching television for three, four hours, and then waking up again earlier in the morning and then starting to just get more tired than I ever was. And all this was because of bad sleep habits. So sleep is a very important process for adults where sometimes rest doesn't come easy. What do we do before we sleep? So cleansing or detoxing your thoughts becomes very important. So what do you say to yourself just before you sleep? What are the things you say? So some people have this amazing, great habit where they stop whatever they're doing just before they go to bed, you know, they, they calm, they tune themselves down, they say a prayer, they hug their loved ones and they go to bed, which is beautiful. To add a little bit into that process is always program your unconscious mind. So what do you want to tell yourself? I'm going to have great sleep. I'm going to be well rested. All my cells are going to heal. I'm going to wake up feeling really refreshed. And also put it in your head. What do you want to what do you want to happen with the quality of your sleep? What do you want to happen the next day? Program that in your mind before you get to bed. So cleanse those thoughts. Don't don't let the mind go all over the place and start thinking and start stressing, start worrying about work the next day, which is very natural to happen when you have a very busy lifestyle. What you want to do is take a few steps back and program it in the way you are planning it for productivity rather than stressing and like oh my god i gotta do this oh my god i gotta do that start planning for productivity so you tell yourself like okay this is how i'm gonna systematically done i have a plan i'm calm i'm feeling good and i'm gonna have a great night's sleep detox all those thoughts tell yourself you're gonna be well rested and you will see the difference and i'm and i'm telling you this with a lot of passion because this has been tried and tested by yours truly. A person who was pretty much an insomniac, who used to wake up at godforsaken hours. I sometimes still do when I get lazy to reprogram my mind before I sleep. And I find that every night when I shut down my phone, put it away, don't even look at it 10 minutes before sleeping. And I spend that little few minutes just having this very, some people say it may be meditative. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not going to use those big words because I, I have not really done it formally. But for me, it's just a very quick detox shutdown process that the mind needs because the conscious mind needs to rest. While our conscious mind is resting, our unconscious mind is still doing those work. So those of us who have had bizarre dreams from time to time, you're wondering where these dreams come from. You are flying, you're falling off a cliff, you're suffocating. Now that is all your unconscious mind sending you some signals, sending you some message. And there is always a certain stress in your life which leads up to dreams like this. And that's a topic for another day. But this is what I need you to remember. Get your mind to relax. And once you have planted those seeds in your unconscious mind that today the master wants to relax, the unconscious mind will help you get that great nights of rest and sleep and wake up the next morning geared for a productive day ahead. So these three tools, ladies and gentlemen, is what I have prepared for you in this video. I truly hope that you have enjoyed it and you have learned something from this video. Now remember, with the learning fact that you have received via email, I have also given you some clear idea on what is expected for your box task 
for this particular video. So remember, get your box task done, send it over to me and I hope you enjoy doing this box task. It's a particularly fun one. And if you have any questions meanwhile, please do not hesitate to contact us at the box training. Here are our contact details. And I sincerely hope that you are going to be able to use all three of those tools. Share these tools with your friends, your loved ones, and let's create that little bit of change. Let's start that change with us and spread this beautiful love across the world to everyone. All the best, take care, and I'll see you in my next video.